Well, the time has come when a bunch of content creators will spam your feed with videos with the following title. Oh my God, emotional iPhone 16 S Ultra X Pro Max Ultra is better than the Canon A7R Mark V, hashtag emotional. That will also be accompanied with a thumbnail of them holding an iPhone in his hand, the camera in his hand, and they will have the sort of facial expression that one has when they first learn that Santa is not real. Now, joking aside, it is that time when the new iPhone comes out and then you get all of these videos where people are comparing phones to cameras and trying to tell their audience which one they should get or which one is better. And sure, these, vid these videos are fantastic, light-hearted entertainment, they get a bunch of clicks, everyone's happy. But let's be honest, the topic is not as simple as that. And in this video, I just wanna address some of the things that are generally not talked about as much, and even address the fact that comparing a smartphone to a camera is not really the best way to go about it. Because you see, a good smartphone complements a good camera and vice versa. So it's not really which one you should get, but which one should you use in the particular scenario versus the other? And what is the ultimate trade-off when you pick one over the other? You see, it's a bit like trying to compare an ultra-fast prime lens to a 24 to 105 general travel zoom. Because on paper, you can have both lenses create an identical image that looks the same on social media, but there are many fundamental differences and reasons why you would pick one over the other and it's exactly the same when it comes to phone versus camera. So that's exactly what we'll talk about in this video and also thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring but more on them later on. All right, let's begin with barrier to entry versus learning and progressing. So my argument here is if you're just getting into photography, if you just want to wet your feet so to speak, a phone will be better than a camera. However, if you are already semi interested in photography and you want to learn and progress, then a camera will be better than a phone. Let me explain. When you first start, you don't want to have any barrier to entry, okay? Whenever you start something new, you never ever ever want to have barriers in front of you that you need to climb over in order to get an idea of whether that pursuit is something that you want to do. So in the example of photography, by buying a dedicated camera, you have a bunch of barriers from a technical one, learning how to use a camera, financial one, as well as an extra bit of kit that you now have to carry around with you and worry about. By only focusing on your phone, you already have everything that you need. And then you can just try and see if you enjoy photography. And honestly, if you enjoy photography, you will enjoy it on almost any device. Now, sure, if you have a nice camera, it's definitely more fun. But in general, if you like the idea of photography, you will like doing it on the phone. Now, let's assume you've been doing this for one, two months, and you think, you know what, I'm actually really enjoying this, and I want to learn and progress. That's where a camera becomes much better because with a camera you have your dedicated buttons menus settings and you can really go dive deep into photography you can really dive deeper into your exposure triangles into focusing modes into underexposing overexposing and by having a dedicated camera you will just have a much better experience learning and progressing as a photographer. Now let's talk about portability versus ergonomics. So with a phone, it's portable, it's always with you, therefore it's the best camera because it's always with you. And ergonomics, well, let's be honest, the camera wins here without a doubt. Phone ergonomics suck. If you don't think they do, then try taking photos in the pouring rain. Not only is your phone gonna slip out of your hand, but the water droplets on the touch screen are gonna call your ex-girlfriend and text your mum something inappropriate. Whereas with a camera, you have your dedicated buttons, dials, it's not gonna slip out your hands, and as long as it's a weather sealed camera, you shouldn't have too many issues either. Same goes for cold weather or extreme light, such as, you know, midday harsh light. Using a phone from an ergonomic perspective is just a pain in the ass because try using a phone with thick winter gloves on. Try using a phone when you can't see the screen because you're, I don't know, in the desert in the middle of the day. This is where the ergonomics and the tactile buttons of a camera are just way superior than a phone. Now, on the other hand though, the phone's always with you. If you're going out for a nice dinner with your missus, you're not gonna just rock up with your Canon D500, is that even a thing, around your neck. Having a phone in your pocket is definitely a bit more suitable. So if you are walking back from dinner, something nice happens, you can still get a decent photo. So to summarize this bit, you can't really compare the two 
one camera is always with you, but you pay a price for it. Whereas the other camera is gonna be better when the situation becomes more tricky, when the conditions become more difficult, and when you need the tactile feel and feedback of a real camera. Tourist versus photographer. Now, any photographer that's watching this that's been shooting in the city would know what it's like to deal with very bored security guards who'd like to come up to you and question you about your entire existence in some cases. Uh, but no, joking aside, with a phone, you just simply look like a tourist. With a camera, you look more like a photographer. And in most cities, many famous locations are actually privately owned. Like in London, a lot of places that you'd think are public because they are famous places, they are privately owned, which means they have private security, security guards walking around. So in many cases, I've been stopped because of my camera and they're asking what you're doing, why you're doing, you shouldn't be taking pictures here, etc., etc. However, the moment you do it with a phone, they don't care because with a phone, they assume you're just a tourist or you're a visitor, you're not a professional, which is still quite funny to think. But anyway, I digress. So this means that by having a good phone with a good camera, you can shoot in more places, not to mention many museums and other locations don't even allow full-size cameras in, but phones are okay. So by having a good phone, you effectively have a free pass to many places that you would otherwise not be able to get to. Now, to play the devil's advocate, there is something to be said about looking professional. Okay, even if you don't know whether you need a shit or a haircut, if you have a tripod and a professional looking camera, people will assume you know what you're doing. And in some cases that can actually help you out and people will leave you alone. But in most scenarios, at least in my experience, I found that if you, if you want to go under the radar, the phone is the way to go. Now let's address the elephant in the room and the one topic that most people will tend to focus on, which is optical image quality versus computational image quality. Again, you can't really compare the two head to head because they have their own strengths and weaknesses and the one that you would choose depends on the end result that you're going for. The one thing we can definitely agree on is that Physics are still physics, and at least right now, it doesn't matter how advanced the AI computational stuff is, it can't compete nor change physics. So a larger sensor on a camera will gather more light. A larger, more expensive lens with more glass will render the scene better. Combine the two together, you will have a much better image quality compared to the phone. Now, personally, I can tell the difference between a phone and the camera almost straight away because no matter how much editing you do, the phone always has that kind of 2D, plasticky, over-sharpened feel to it where a camera has a lot more graduation and has a lot more depth to it. And that's mainly because of those differences. Now, with each iPhone, with each year, um, that is definitely getting better, as in the image quality is becoming less plasticky, less over-sharpened. But as it stands today, there is still a bit of difference there. Now, sure, if you take a photo on a bright sunny day at F10 on the Fuji and you use the RAW function on the iPhone, and then you edit them the same, you put them side by side, you'll probably find that they look very similar, and they would. However, the moment you need to start opening up the lens, the moment the light drops, the moment you have to start taking photos of more challenging lighting conditions, that's where you will start to notice big differences between the two. Oh, hello, editing Roman here. There's one thing I forgot to mention where the phone does a beat to the camera, at least in terms of instant delivery. And that is with HDR. The auto HDR feature, which is AI based and all that is becoming so good on phones that you can get a really good HDR shot in a matter of seconds. If I wanna do that with this, the X-T4, I'll have to actually bracket the photo, take a normal exposure over under exposure to get the entire dynamic range. I'll then have to blend it all together in Lightroom, edit the image and end up with a very good result. Now sure, the camera image once edited and processed is of a much higher quality than the iPhone, but in terms of instant results, the iPhone gets you 90% of the quality within reason, but it's instant. So if you want that instant HDR photo, the phone is the only real way to go. But if you want to post-process it and work on it and get the best quality possible, then obviously the camera wins out. At this point, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is my main portfolio where people come to see my best work. I have full control of how my work is presented 
and interacted with. Squarespace is also the hub for my business, my newsletter, and my travel photography blog. Finally, I use Squarespace as my social media landing page and my digital business card. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, having your own website is never a bad idea. So if this is something that interests you, click the link below to get a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching. And finally, let's just talk about a few smaller things in terms of trade off So with a phone, everything you need is there. You can take a photo, you can edit it, you can share it, you can publish it, you can do whatever you want with it. And certainly with the iPhones that are becoming so popular that you can legitimately use it as an editing computer. And I have used my iPhone 13 to edit my Fuji RAW files without any issues at all. Whereas with a camera, it's a more involved process. You need more um, accessories and more gear in order to make the most of it. Now, this is where I would say, think about whether you want to have that process and that stuff with you, or whether you want to be kind of free and simple. So a good example of that is if you just want to take some photos on a beach at midday, I would say you're better off just using the phone because you will get very good image quality. You can process it straight away and you can share it straight away. And because the lighting is good, you're not struggling with the whole sensor size thing. Whereas if you're waking up for sunrise and you have this one in a million chance of seeing something great and you don't want to miss it, that's where I would come with the camera and have to deal with the extra process. Now, personally, I enjoy the process of the camera, which is why I still use my camera in 95% of cases over the phone. But there are other people like my mum, for example, she loves photography, but she hates cameras. So for her, the iPhone is by far the best choice because she can take the photos, go through them, delete them, send them to the cloud, and as far as she's concerned, she's done. Okay, that's all for today's video. So to summarize, comparing phones directly to cameras is like comparing apples to oranges. They don't necessarily replace each other, but they complement each other. So in my opinion, having a good camera and a good phone will pretty much cover you for everything that you need. And finally, this is not a dig at the creators doing the whole phone versus camera thing. Look, people love those videos, they get the views that the creators want, and in general, it provides light-hearted entertainment for everyone. This video is simply just to give you a slightly different angle on this ever-popular topic. All right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.